Hello, so after a long time using Grease Pencil, I decided finally to go and watch Dante's one hour and a half packed with tips video, the mine of knowledge that everyone can benefit from. I decided also to make a short about anything I didn't know before and ended up 1. explaining some things that were mentioned briefly, 2. adding my own tips based on my little experience and 3. updating information for the latest Blender versions. So here's a compilation with the first 20 episodes of a long series I named Grease Pencil Stuff I Was Too Lazy To Learn 1. You can change the shortcut for switching modes from Control Tab to just Tab by going to Preferences, Key Map and tick Tab for Pi Menu. But if you often use Edit Mode or work with rigs, this might not be suitable for you. Because Tab is the default shortcut to Edit Mode and when an armature is selected Control Tab is the shortcut to pause mode. If you are in draw mode for example, tab will take you quickly to edit mode and tab again brings you back to draw mode. With an armature, tab and control tab allow quick switching between object, edit and pause modes. 2. You can press Z on the keyboard to display the Pi menu to change shading mode. And you can have more items in it if you go to preferences, key map, extra shading items. Now you also have X-ray and overlays buttons in your Pi menu. Personally, I rarely need to switch shading mode or toggle X-ray when using grease pencil, but I disable and enable overlays all the time. That's why I followed Sophie Gentax lead by assigning D as a keyboard shortcut to overlays. What a time and frustration saver. 3. To create a new area in Blender, go to a corner to see a plus sign. Left click and drag horizontally or vertically. You can split your new area again by going to its corner, left clicking and dragging inward. Or drag outward to join it with its neighbor. For this to work, make sure your cursor is inside your area when you drag and not between two areas. If you don't like dragging, you can instead right click on corners or borders to split and join areas. For more info, watch the in-depth areas tutorial on my channel. 4. Most Blender users will customize Blender preferences for their needs and convenience. To save yourself from accidentally losing your customized settings, click on the Save Preferences button on the Preferences window. If there's no button, click the three lines icon and you should find Auto Save Preferences enabled. This makes Blender save settings automatically every time you exit Blender. But you may want to disable this to prevent accidental changes. To restore your saved settings after editing or resetting them, click the three lines and choose Revert to Saved Preferences. 5. I did know that you can right-click almost anything in Blender to add it to Quick Favorites or create a keyboard shortcut, and that you can access Quick Favorites with Q. But I didn't know that it even works in Menu Search. Menu Search allows you to find any item from these menus. Hit F3, search for an item, left click to use it or right click and add it to quick favorites. Note that menus and search results vary depending on the current mode. Also, you have to add separate quick favorites for each mode. 6. Here are some draw mode shortcuts. Alt plus the left mouse button with the draw tool will draw straight vertical or horizontal lines. Control plus the left mouse button switch temporarily to the Erase tool which erases strokes. Control plus Alt plus the right mouse button switch temporarily to the Cutter tool which also selects strokes to cut or delete them. If you have select with the right mouse button enabled in your key map settings and their preferences, the combo to lasso select is Ctrl plus Alt plus the left mouse button. 7. Holding Shift while using one of the lines tools draws the line at 0, 45 or 180 degrees. Holding Shift with the box or circle tools makes a perfect square or circle. Holding Alt while using a line or shape tool will center the line or shape on the point you started drawing from. To make the letter T with the line tool, we hold Shift while dragging down, middle mouse button or enter to commit, then we put the cursor on top of the line, start making a new line and press Shift plus Alt to make it perfectly horizontal and centered. These points allow adjusting the line or shape further. 
You can use G to move it or tap to go back to editing. Right click or escape to cancel, middle mouse button or enter to comment. 8. When I do grease pencil animation, I often need to return to the first frame in the timeline. The shortcut is Shift plus the left arrow on the keyboard. To go to the last frame, do Shift and right arrow. Note that the frames these shortcuts take you to are the start and end frames you specify in your timeline. Ctrl plus I invert keyframe selection. Shift plus R repeats the last action. This shortcut can save you a lot of time and I always forget to use it. E moves selected keyframes from one side of the playhead only and S scales selected keyframes with the playhead as the scale in center. Shift plus T slide keyframes. E, S and Shift T are useful to change animation timing. 9. You can make your own palette to paint with grease pencil. In draw mode switch to color attribute mode, click the color and press this add new palette button. Change its name to whatever and you can select a color here or left click here and make a color here. Then hit the plus button to add it to your palette. You can also select the eyedropper tool, choose palette mode here and every time you click a color in the viewport it will be added to your palette. 10. Blender has a few default brushes that you may not want to mess up by editing them. If so, you can create a new brush and play as you wish with its settings. With the draw tool selected go to the active tool panel, select the brush you want to duplicate and click this number or this add brush button. Now you can rename your new brush and change settings. For example enable randomize and go wild. You can protect the material used with the brush by enabling pin material. This way if you change material for another brush your custom brush won't be affected. Note that you also can create brushes for the fill, erase and tint tools. 11. We saw how to make a palette in short number 9. Now to import a palette from another Blender file, go to File Append. Find your Blender file, double click on it, then find the palette folder, double click, select your palette and hit Append. To import a KPL palette, Krita, or ASE Palette Adobe, enable the native import palettes add-on from Blender Preferences, then go to File Import KPL or ASE. 12. Dante's method to copy color from fill to stroke or vice versa is to press E while the cursor is on the color that you want to change, then click on the other color. Another method is to use the universal control C while the cursor is on the color you want to copy, then control V on the color you want to change. These two methods are not for grease pencil only but can be used on any setting in Blender with color in it. The first method can pick a color anywhere in the Blender window. The second method can copy and paste colors between workspaces or panels that are not visible simultaneously. 13. You can fill multiple shapes at once if you go outside the shapes and do Ctrl left click. Choosing to fill inverted areas with this minus sign button has the same effect. You can even fill the shapes again if you redo Ctrl left click. It's pointless I know but not if you change the fill color, change the contract value to minus 20 pixels then do Ctrl left click. I like it, let's do it again. It's a shame we can't go beyond minus 40 pixels, but well. 14. Holdout materials can be tricky. They are invisible and make other strokes and fills behind them invisible if they are in the same object. Strokes and fills can be holdouts if you enable this option. But they are perfectly invisible only if the base color is black. If you want a grease pencil drawing to be visible behind a holdout material, it needs to be in a separate object. Here I changed the base color for these holdout materials to make them slightly opaque and emulate glass. 15. We explained holdout materials in the previous short. A texture material can also be a holdout. 
You can use a transparent PNG as texture to create complex holes easily. If it's not black and you want it perfectly transparent, make sure the base color is black and increase the blend value. 16. Some fill tool settings. Increasing precision will make the fill shape stick better to the borders but adds a lot of subdivisions to it and slows your project. Also, it may add some unnecessary details to the fill. You can compensate tall by increasing the simplify value under advanced. Experiment with both values and see what works best. Thickness is if your filling material has a stroke and applies to boundary strokes too. A boundary stroke is a gap filling helper. To draw one, hold Alt while the fill tool is selected. To delete it, go to Draw, Clean up, Boundary Strokes. Enable this to ignore strokes with transparency when filling shapes. Higher threshold means that more opaque strokes will be ignored. 17. The eraser tool has three modes, the solve which is smooth, point which erases points, and stroke that deletes entire strokes. The solve mode has settings for brush strength, affecting opacity and thickness of strokes. This mode will lower the opacity and or thickness of strokes depending on your settings and delete points when they are no longer visible. Instead of changing modes, you can use one of the default eraser brushes or create a custom brush as we explained in short number 10. Save your new brush with the startup file to keep it and use it forever. 18. Brushes that use dots line strokes are good for drawing soft strokes. If you use lower hardness with a stroke of the type line, the result won't be very pretty. The airbrush, one of the default brushes, is a great soft brush. Its secret is using the dot stroke material of course, having input samples set to 10 which creates denser points when drawing, and having the simplify setting and the, the stroke menu set to zero or post-processing disabled altogether. 19. Post-processing under the stroke menu optimizes strokes after they are drawn by smoothing, simplifying them or trimming their ends by enabling this option. The outline option was added in Blender 3.4. Learn to use it in the Blender 3.4 review video. Randomize has a bunch of options to experiment and go crazy with. Stabilize allows drawing smoother lines especially if you are using a mouse. You can tweak its settings, disable it, then use shift while drawing to stabilize. 20. I used these three buttons before, but believe it or not, I didn't know this one existed. This guy when enabled will add weight to your strokes as you draw them. If you have no idea what weight is, I explain it in a video on this channel. How to use it? In the Object Data Properties panel under Vertex Groups, select the group you want weight to be added to or create a new group. Now draw your stroke, maybe a head, select another group and draw the chest, etc. Now in weight paint mode, select your vertex groups, your strokes should have a weight value of 1. This is the end of the first shorts compilation, leave a like and subscribe to watch the upcoming shorts, there are a lot of them in the making, so see you in the next video and peace.